My name is Harold Douglas, but a lot of people know me by my moniker, DJ HD. Um, as the name suggests, <laughs> I'm a DJ, um, local DJ. Started out doing nightclubs and house parties around um, the University of Cincinnati scene. And now I kind of travel from city to city throwing events and concerts and DJing some of the coolest stuff in the country. So, so I actually, when I first started DJing, I didn't even, like, uh, I knew I wanted to be a hip hop, like, uh, but I didn't even know the first thing about DJing. I didn't know uh, that I even wanted to do it. So I started off as an artist, a hip hop artist, and I didn't see that going very well, so, so to speak. So then after that, I just knew I wanted to dabble in it. So I started, you know, I, I, I was in fashion for a little while, so t-shirts with rap lyrics, I was like one of the first people doing that. And then I had a hip hop blog, deeperthanbass.com, where it was basically the rap genius of the day. But we didn't go into that much detail. We basically just took a few select lines out of a hip hop song and explained it. So um, I was I was kind of experiencing a little bit more success with that than any of my previous ventures. So I was like, okay, this is where I am. And I'm like, how can I take my blog to the next level? So I was like, I need to be deep in the culture. How can I do that? I tried being an artist, tried fashion. So DJ was the last thing that I landed on. And of course, you know, when you have a hip hop blog, you, you're you uh, obviously interested in getting new music, you know, displaying it for people. So it just was a perfect fit. And then um, when I started DJing, I actually didn't know the first thing about getting into the nightclub scene. So for about maybe uh, six months after I went to school for DJing, I, went, I took a, uh, I took like a seven week course at Scratch Academy in Miami, Florida. Yeah. And um, which my mom paid for it. Thank you. <laughs> she paid for that. It was like my first investment into my career. And uh, she paid for that course. And uh, I came back. I knew what I was doing, but I didn't have equipment. I didn't know how to get into the scene. None of it. Like, I would. I would go to clubs. I went to clubs, but I just didn't know who to talk to or even how to find out. Like, so um, I shadowed an older DJ for a while, for about six months, and um, I was doing like family reunions and <laughs> old school parties and stuff like that for like a while. So then, when I first broke into the nightclub, like, well, let's travel back. I did a I did a few house parties at UC. We threw a house party, actually. We didn't, I couldn't even get into the house party scene. Nobody was like, nobody wanted us to DJ, nobody wanted me to DJ a house party. Like, it was like that real. It was like house parties didn't even really have DJs. Nobody wanted to pay you. It was like, we just gonna play music off, the, off iTunes and then when it runs out, somebody else can just change it. So, so it was like, okay. So then I started, we, we, we decided to throw a house party. Uh, my boy had an apartment in Clifton, and it was like a seven or eight unit apartment. And everybody in the unit was real, real cool. So everybody just kind of got involved with the house party. So we kind of had like eight units of party and steps. Like, it was like the craziest thing too, and we just do, threw it in one day. And then um, I was like, I knew I was good because I had been practicing by myself for like six months. Like, I just never played in front of people. Like, um, so by the time we had that party, like, uh, it was actually a little harder than I thought. <laughs> and um, I was actually trash. But, like, for the first two hours, killing it. I was killing it. Everybody was like, oh, my God, you so much better than all the rest of the DJs. And, like, I knew, like, at about 12 o'clock, I had nothing left. <laughs> like, I was going to have to play every song over and I had nothing left. So luckily, the party got shut down at like 12.30. <laughs> and it was like, and from then on, like, I just started getting booked for all the all the major UC events, whatever group, intramural sport. Okay, the book is called I Eat My Cereal Like a Boss. And I love that title. 
right? Um, that title was kind of inspired by like by my journey as a DJ, to be honest, because like I spent a lot of time not feeling like I was in control of you know the, the outcomes that I was bringing to myself. So I felt like like uh like uh I used to regret doing a lot of things, and I had to like kind of like had a mental shift in my mind so that I can move forward. Because if you stuck on stuff, it'll stick with you forever and it'll it'll hinder your growth. Like, I used to regret the way I used to talk to people. I used to regret, I used to regret like, because I would never like, um, I would never um, just like grovel with people. Like, you know, it seemed like you had to, like you had to beg to get a DJ gig back in the day because everybody knew exactly who the main DJs were and they were not trying to, you know, mess with nobody new. So it was like, I never I never was the one to like be all up under the promoter and beg and try to, you know, constantly hit them up and ask them and ask them and ask them. And I used to really regret that. And I used to be like, man, this is why I'm not in a good position to where I am. And I would be like, and I would be like, uh, the decisions that I made about, uh, Sticking to my price when, when everybody was like, we don't know who you are. You need to go a little cheaper. Like we don't know you. Like decisions about that. Like before, know your worth, King was out. Like before that phrase was out. Like I was struggling with knowing my worth. Like I was struggling with um, every negotiation. Like I would always feel like I gave up too much, or I, and I would just regret it. And I would be like, you know what? I'm exactly where I should be. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that I'm perfectly, you know, exactly where I want to be, but it's like, given what I did and and I'm happy with myself, like, I can feel just as much of, I can feel like a boss that I really am. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the same way I had to shift the narrative on how I thought about, how I thought about uh, going to a packed club every week and not getting paid. I had to shift the narrative on a lot of things, and and it kind of, and it really helped me grow. Like I can say now, like um, when I shifted the narrative on how how I engage with the club owners, it made me like you know the it put me in the best financial situation I've ever been in. So like you know instead of talking to promoters, I started to talk to owners. I started to talk to owners. I started to uh, I started to negotiate the same deals that promoters would do um, as a DJ, which was like something that we hadn't seen. Like I started to uh, I started to not, you know, I started to turn down like clickish opportunities, like you know, and that's another thing. I would I would regret that, and then it was just like, okay, I'll put all that energy into myself and. And it made my brand bigger, like so. It's just been a it's been a learning process, and I put all that I put all those like lessons that I learned in the books and, and into that book, and um, you know, and the people that helped me make those decisions along the way, like because Lord knows I had plenty of help. You know, I would be talking to people like, man, I feel like they're trying to play me. <laughs> I feel like they're trying to play me. How should I talk to them? They like, yeah, man, you need to boss up on them. <laughs> or sometimes they be like, nah, they ain't trying to play you. So I just put like all those like my new details into that book, and or anywhere just close to just like young and just needing like to reaffirm that they are who they say they are. Like they'll love it. They'll love it. I eat my cereal like a boss. When you think about the title, it's like it's almost disrespectful. Like. How do you eat your cereal like a boss? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and in reality, it's just a metaphor. It's like, I'm not putting on a pinstripe suit whenever I eat cereal. It's like, but I start my day off with this notion of who I am. Like, I have to, and I start reaffirming myself from the time that the day starts. So I can engage in every conversation knowing who I am nowadays so I don't regret as much like you know what I'm saying I don't I don't I don't have no regrets no more because I know whatever I did whether it was whether it resulted in this or it resulted in that I did it like a boss and I can live with that oh that was good <laughs>